Hello and welcome to Let's Talk. I uh, told you a little positivity on the next one. Just want to talk about players I collect, teams I collect, different things I collect, and why I do it. Uh, start out, you know, you can probably see over here, Gary Carter. Uh, didn't know it till I started getting into the YouTube community. There was a such thing as super collecting. And he's one of the guys I super collect. Uh, I pick him up whenever I can. I have lists of cards I need. Lucky enough, he's he didn't play in the 90s. So I don't have to get thousands of different versions. Or even now. Uh, <laughs> I don't... It's a very straightforward, you know, food and beverage is where the tough part is for collecting Gary Carter. Uh, and then how I got to Gary Carter was I started out with Johnny Bench as my favorite player. Uh, my dad was sitting me down in front of, you know, big red machine of the 70s, I'm a child of 70s and 80s. They were on a lot of Saturday afternoons, game of the weeks. And uh, this was way before cable, way before seeing every game. So uh, Saturday afternoon in my house, it was baseball and I was a little tyke and he would sit me down and, you know, he had me, I would run around yelling Johnny Bench. He would tell me a Saturday and I'd just start yelling Johnny Bench and uh, loved him. And I got to meet him at the National and got to shaking and spoke and I told him thank you and uh, I loved the baseball bunch. If anybody... 80s baseball bunch on Saturday afternoon. Great. One of the greatest TV shows for kids. And they need to do something like that now. Um, they're missing things. I, baseball needs to really have a reach out program. I, they're not very good at marketing. And uh, it's really bad. It's a shame. But back to what, what we're here for. Uh, then uh, Kyle Ripken. Baltimore Orioles, when we got cable, they were our first team, WDCA, uh, out of Washington. You didn't get to see all the games, but they showed some of the games. So you got more games than we did in the past, and they were really good. You know, World Series teams in the early 80s. You know, I believe what they played, the Pirates. It was 81, I think. Uh, my dad made sure I was could be home from school. So they were still playing afternoon games, playoffs, uh, World Series games. Uh, yeah, I love Kyle Ripken. And, man, if you want to show somebody the right way how to play, Kyle Ripken is that somebody. He did it, did it right, and uh, was very – played at a high level for a long time and did it every day. Nobody's going to break that record. Uh, so that, that was why. Then when I got older, graduated in 89, you know, that was Ken Griffey and it was Frank Thomas after that. And, uh, I love Griffey. I mean, the smile, man, how he played just the, he was the first one that kind of was like, he, he wasn't so serious. He was laughing, joking and, uh, you know, like Ozzy Gillion, he would do that and some of those other players, but. You know, Griffey, just chatty fly balls, T-shirt, hat on backwards, and, you know, what, whatever. <laughs> what We're playing baseball. Let's not be so uptight. And uh, it, that, he, he, the fun of the game was there, and uh, that's why I love watching. I mean, it was Ken Griffey, sweetest swing in baseball, man. Beautiful. And, uh, you know, then we started having ESPN, so I was lucky enough to uh, get to see some of his games because – they showed quite a bit of Seattle then. Um, they were a decent team, but it, it was Ken Griffey, you know, best player in the game at that point probably. And being 19, just amazing. And then uh, Frank Thomas. And we had WGN. WGN showed a lot of – they were a Cubs channel, but they did show White Sox games. Uh, you can put that one on the board with Hulk Carrison and all of those guys that – it was fun watching them and, you know, that team with uh, Bo Jackson on it and Rock Reigns and was it Ventura was on there. I'm trying to remember some of those players. And, uh, man, that was fun.
fun, fun baseball. And gosh, could he hit the ball hard and it went far. <laughs> he, he uh, gosh, he could crush it. And man, and, and, uh, and that's where my, my big Scott 35, I, sp- I started playing softball, wore 35. I wore his cleats, played first sometimes. And an umpire started calling me big hurt and it kind of carried over and, and play a lot of tournaments and stuff. And then I started playing video games and that was my handle was big scott and had to had to have a number so it was 35 and then along the way i lost a password so i had to create a new name and it was big scott with a one so that's that's where we're at with my name but uh uh i love frank and those guys i i collect a lot of all of them i see a video a couple of days ago i got a a four row box full of cow ripkins just full just packed cow ripkins <laughs> and uh had fun going through that had, had some didn't have all and i got a lot of contemplating on what to do with some of it but uh if i hang on to it forever i hang on to it forever i'm a collector first might get some of them graded i got probably 300 uh 87s that you know i would love to get a 10 in one of those Cause that that's special then uh but then uh you know now it's I, I like trout i like soto you know dansby swanson some of the you know normal i collect virginia players so you know anybody from virginia uh theus from angels uh upton's mark reynolds uh uh, the guy from the Dodgers that's escaping me right now, uh, Ryan Zimmerman. Um, so there's a, a sprinkling of Virginia. Virginia's had a very good ball team since Zimmerman was left there. And, uh, you know, we have a World Series championship there. And so not too shabby. And thanks to Zimmerman, they got a very nice complex. And uh, so they – very good recruiting uh there and a very good team very good coach uh from not too far from where i live now in iowa but he's from the southern part i live in the northern part or he doesn't live there but he's from there uh so he you know very good and uh so baseball is where i'm at basketball i used to love it kind of falling away i still pick up you know i've shown a couple virginia basketball cards you know i still have some uh basketball i guess my, i love used to love barkley um just <laughs> the man <laughs> when he speaks is the funniest dude on earth <laughs> he was once asked if he had a gambling problem he said if you can afford to lose it's not a problem so that <laughs> was one of the funniest things i ever heard <laughs> uh so you know and he was on the dream team and all that and uh you know so it it, it was you know, that basketball's kind of falling away for me. You know, I, not really. I don't really watch it at all anymore. Football, I enjoy to a certain extent. They, when they put the new rules in, as soon as I see something stupid, a stupid flag, or I kind of, I got to turn it. Uh, I do get up and, and uh, make sure I watch the Virginia game every week. I got into an hour where I watch the Iowa game because where I live at. If I don't, then I'm. You know, it's like watching a television series that everybody else is watching and talking about. You don't know what's going on. So I almost feel like I have to just because. And, they, and, and they're fun to watch. Um, but uh, Big Ten football is definitely different than ACC football where they're good and <laughs> ACC's not. So, you know, it's fun to watch it. Uh, <laughs> except for Clemson. Uh, so... <laughs> So you have that here. And then, uh, you know, hockey, Capitals, strictly Capitals, football, strictly Cowboys. I'm very focused when it comes to collecting those teams. Now, hockey, there are some players I like to keep hang on to when I open up packs. You know, I'll keep any young gun. I'll get those graded, see what they do. Um, And then uh, I, I hang on to some of the other guys that are some of the better players and uh but not too much i probably got like five cars that are not 
Washington Capitals. I got boxes of, ca of hockey cards, but uh, they're just sitting back there. I don't know really what to do with them. I might, who knows? I might just donate them to my card shop. I, I don't know yet, but uh, you know, he, it, it just, I'm just not into that. I, I, I pay for uh, the hockey package so I can watch Capital games and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, with the Cubs collecting baseball is where it's at. And Star Wars. If you watch my channel, you do see I get the Star Wars living set. I have picked up uh, some of the masterworks and some of the uh, higher end boxes of Star Wars. But I don't have that money right now to spend into that because you got to spend so much for baseball if you want anything. Jesus Christ. But anyway, uh, back to why we're here. I'm not being negative. Not, no negativity. So, and, you know, when it Mets, I collect Mets. LGM, man. Let's go Mets. And uh, so that's where I'm at. I wanted to touch on this. Just a story and why I collect. I like c p picking up cards of my players in my lifetime outside of Roberto Clemente is who is who I collect outside but I wanted to talk about Matt Blunden and you're going who the hell is Matt Blunden Matt Blunden played for the University of Virginia in the late 80s graduated like 92 with the Chiefs back up. I, he started a handful. I forget who the starter was then. And uh, man, I, and he went to the Lions and he played a couple of uh, half a season because I think he backed up Scott Mitchell there and he got hurt. And he didn't do half bad, but uh, he, he wasn't in the league too long. I, what am I looking at here? He was 92 to 97. So he had a good five years in the league. And that's more than the average. So yeah, good job. He played one season in Europe, too, when I looked at it. But he also played basketball at Virginia, power forward. Um, he, uh, me and my friends, this is why I, I had to get, I got this and, and texted it to a few of my friends at Virginia. They started cracking up because of this story. One of my older friends went to a small college by 900 students. And we would go there on the weekends. It was a, on the weekends, huge party school. And the 900 students were all boys. And on the weekends, it was three to one ratio of girls to boys on that campus. It was a very crazy scene at the school. Um, so me and my friends would go there for these big weekends and we would make up names. Don't ask me why. It's in case something happened, I guess. <laughs> but my name was Matt Blunded. And we didn't look that this campus wasn't too far from the UVA campus, maybe an hour. So, but nobody ever caught on. And I used to tell that to everybody when I went to the cafeteria. As soon as I got to that campus, my name was Matt Blunden. And my other name, my other friends would make up ridiculous names. <laughs> it, it was something that we were doing that was very dumb at the time. And we were young. We were 21 because we were drinking. So we had to be 21, right? So we were, we were 21. But we just were made up dumb, dumb names <laughs> and it cracking up. And, you know, this guy, when he played basketball, I don't think I didn't touch on this, but man, his biggest move was he threw the ball in to John Crotty. John Crotty dribbled up the court. He stood at the top of the key. Crotty would give him the ball and, and Crotty would run and rub his defender off and Blunden would give him the ball right back and then he ran the offense. And Blunden really did. He scored four points. It was a good game for him. He might have a couple of rebounds. But that was his play. And he defended well. He gets some defensive rebounds. But offensively, no. Nah. But man, he, he did that. Me and my friends, we'd get together and watch Virginia games because we love Virginia. And <laughs> that was his play. We were like, what is he doing? 75% <laughs> of the time. Give it. I want to rub off. The defender, it was like, man, and we went to a lot of high school games. Nobody else ever did that. It was crazy. And Blunden just kind of just jogged up the court. Just, it was, uh, it was hilarious. But anyway, that's why I collect. And that's why I collect players of 
that play in my lifetime because I have stories. When I see cards, man, it cracks me up. You know, when I see Ozzy Gillian, even though he said some people think he said something ridiculous and now he's can't be in the major leagues. He was a fun player to watch. And when I see one of his cards and 90% of them are smiling, laughing, because that's the player he was. When he was playing for the White Sox, he talked to everybody, fans, every, and made everybody laugh. I went to a, a minor league game in my home, around my hometown, Richmond Braves, before they left to go back. To, I think they went to Macon or somewhere in Georgia. So they were the Richmond Braves. And Butch Hobson was playing there for, I think, um, Scranton Worksboro when they were the uh, Yankees farm system. And my dad started telling me about when he man or when he played in the majors. This was before Butch Hobson became a manager. So we went the next night, and of course, you know, they're playing a weekend set with them. I took a card. I looked through my cards, and they're 1982, I believe, in an Angels uniform. If I remember correctly, I got it over here on my shelf, and I got an in-person autograph. And I sat there, and I said, hey, and my dad was telling me stories, and I think I was a young teenager at the time. And uh, he sat there and talked to me. I mean, that's what, man, that type of stuff sticks with a person, especially a young person. And and that's that's what I love about about the game, and that's what I love about collecting. And when I pull out a card, it's you know I can, it's my yearbook, it's my time capsule. I can remember stuff from that time. My dad asked me why do I have so many cards, and I'm like, you know, other people have um, photo albums. I have baseball cards. That's how I remember time, and uh, and I can attach memories to different cards, different eras. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of nineties cards. I do have a lot of holes, but I have a lot of holes in my memory in the nineties as well. So it kind of, kind of works out. Oh, so until next time, that's just a little background on me. If you got any questions, tell me what you're looking for. You know, I also love 71. I pick, I, I collect a 71 set just cause that was the year I was born. So, you know, tell me why you love to collect it. It's I love hearing those stories, and that's why I babble a lot when I'm showing cards. I get that a lot in the comments. My videos are a little long, but I could talk about them all day. So, till next time, see ya.